Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another somewhat daily Q&A. Uh, I do apologize. I didn't really get the content out this week that I wanted to just because it is archery season here in Pennsylvania. And uh, yeah, I've been trying to harvest a deer in 80 degree weather, which hasn't really worked out very well. If you're a hunter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So hopefully you will get a dip in temperature before the end of the month and I'll be able to harvest a couple of those tags uh, before uh, archery season ends. So uh, with that said, uh, today's video I'm going to answer about eight questions that you guys submitted in the previous videos in the series uh, in the comment sections and hopefully I can make up for the lack of content over the last few days. So uh, with that said, our first question is from Jesse. Travis, what light would you recommend for a refugium? Gunner Grow Chato, is the Kessel worth it over say an AI, AI Fuge light? Uh, thanks. So uh, when it comes to Kessel, uh, you guys know that I'm a big fan. I have them over here on the tubs. I used the, the Kessel H380, I think it is, over a couple client tanks. And by the way, when I Googled the H380, it didn't come up anymore. So I'm assuming that they discontinued it. Uh, if you can verify that, let me know. You'll save me from doing an additional Google search or reaching out to Kessel themselves. But uh, either way, uh, Kessel's a great brand. Uh, if you've been watching the channel, I've done a, quite a bit, quite a few different types of refugiums. I know that we have the Reef Brights. You can't see here, but on this refugium under the 300, I use Reef Brights. And then I've done DIY with the 5,000 Kelvin. Uh, there are spotlights from Home Depot. I had a 40 gallon refugium on an imported system, actually where the low boys are behind me or in front of me. And uh, that did great. It worked out really well. It was like 35 bucks. It had a ton of light and grew a ton of uh, Chato without any issues. And uh, again, I've used the Kessels without any problems. Now, I have not used the AI Fuge light, so I can't really give you an opinion on that. But AI does make great lighting. I've used their AI Prime HDs over several tanks, and uh, you know I'm assuming if they're just as good as their display tank lights, it's it's going to grow Chato. So, uh, with that said. It really comes down to what you want to do, whatever your budget is. Uh, the reality is, when it comes to like growing coral and stuff, I would say you get what you're, you're, you know, what you're paying for. That's what I'm for. Yeah, you're getting what you pay for, especially when it comes to growing coral. But when it comes to refugium, it's it's macroalgae. Do the DIY if you want to do that, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, or if you want to spend the money on Kessel, uh, go ahead and do it. I mean, it's up to you. But uh, yeah, that's on you, man. So next question here. Uh, Providence Title Reef says, one of my acros, I'm guessing he meant to say, isn't extending polyps as much. It is also uh, has decided to encrust the same area I placed it. Is there something wrong? Is this normal? So I think you have two different issues here. Now, when it comes to an, an acropora encrusting out, uh, usually I find that bushier types of miliopora, miliopora will do that, and then they'll start sprouting up in different areas around where they encrusted or within the encrusted area, and then they'll kind of grow into a bush. So uh, I wouldn't really worry about it if it's a millie. Um, I find that staghorns don't actually do that. If you guys see this green slimer here, yeah, there's like this little mini, mini little little stem holding up that entire uh, bush of coral, which it's cool the way it grows, but Big Birth is just come, is one tail slap away from knocking that whole thing over. So it'll be on the bottom of the tank probably within the next couple months. But either way, uh, just depending on what type of acre you have, they tend to kind of build a base and then go up. And that's why I say I'm surprised that the staghorn doesn't, given how they actually grow. You think the base would be much bigger, but they are a little bit stockier than your average uh, Acropora, so maybe that makes up for it. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't really worry about the encrusting too much. I think that's fine. As long as the coloration's good, and, the, and uh, you said your polyp extension's a little off. We'll get that here in a second. But if, if the color's fine, and it's just encrusting, and you got new growth, you can see the white new growth, I wouldn't really worry about it. It will shoot up at some point. Now with polyp extension, if you're not getting as much polyp extension, this could be from many different things. Maybe you have invert bothering it, maybe you have fish bothering it, maybe your nutrients have dipped or, or even they went up, uh, whatever. You got fluctuation in some kind of water parameter. I would say double check everything, double check test kits, make sure nothing's expired. Just make sure your tests and your numbers are within normal range. And if you still have, you know, polyp extension is not the greatest, just leave it alone. If the rest of the coral in the tank are fine, leave it alone. The coral will find a way. It's nature. It would either grow or it's not going to grow. You know, and most likely, if you're providing a stable environment and everything else in the tank is fine, it's going to grow one way or another. It just might take a little bit longer. So, hopefully, that helps you out. Moving on to the next question here, ATF in the house says, "Do you need a cleanup crew in a vat of live rock with six to ten hours of lighting, flow, and heat? Some mushrooms and zoas and minimal feeding with phytoplankton once a month." Uh, well, I don't think you really need a cleanup crew in there unless there's an issue you're trying to deal with. I find that cleanup crew, a lot of people are always about buying all these different types of cleanup crews and throw them in their tank. 
most of the time those cleanup crews are useless. I find them to be utility, uh, just like you know tangs. It's a utility fish. Uh, cleanup crew is, is just a utility. It's something that you're going to use to help something going out or some kind of problem in the tank. So for me, we have Mexican turbo snails that clean the glass. Uh, if I have uh, a client with like bubble algae or something, we'll throw some emerald crabs in to help out. If you need your sand uh, sifted, sand sifted in Sea Star or uh, some kind of other invert that might help with that. Uh, I'm not really too familiar with, uh, I think, the Sarah snail, something like that. I'm not too familiar with sand sifting types of stuff because I don't really rock sand, if you guys know. So. Uh, I find that if you don't need it, say you don't have you know algae growing on the rocks, there's not really anything in there that's going to benefit or be worth you know spending the money on. Then you don't really need to have the inverts or the cleanup crew in there. But hey, if you just want to have biodiversity and have things moving around in this vat, then you know go ahead and uh, spend the money. So moving on, uh, next question is from Steve. What do you what do you feed? It's kind of here. Well, I can't read today. I'm looking down too. Uh, what do you feed the cleanup crew for a 30-day QT period? So. If you're quarantining a cleanup crew for 30 days, what do you feed them? I like to use the sinking algae wafers. Uh, the, I use them in freshwater to feed like uh, Placosimus and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I just throw a couple of those in. They'll surround it, eat their thing, eat their, eat their thing. They'll eat the stuff, and then uh, you know they'll go about their day. But that's about it. I don't really target feed with any kind of special food. I don't do anything too crazy. The algae wafers are, are plenty of food for the cleanup crew during that 30-day period. The other thing is you don't want to put a bunch of stuff in there uh, because uh, well, it, you're just going to dirty up the water and just be unnecessary maintenance you have to take care of. So moving on here, next question. Uh, personally, I use natural seawater in my tanks and have never had an issue. Have you ever considered using natural seawater over making your own? Well, here in Pennsylvania, natural seawater is, from one of my knowledge, isn't readily available. Uh, I can't just go get it. Um, they might sell it at the store or something like that, but you're going to probably pay a premium for it. Uh, for the amount of water that I use here in the fish room, I don't think it's going to be uh, a good idea for me to use natural seawater. I'm sure there's tons of benefits of all the great things you can get from actually having natural seawater in your tank. But for me and my setup and kind of how much water is shipping out with coral every week and need to be replaced or water changes and just the amount that I have. And if I could find it, it probably would be really expensive and not worth my time. But hey, if you're living on the coast and you have means of getting it where it's cheaper and it's you know, readily available, then by all means, Going natural seawater is probably your best bet, but for me, it's just not something that I can do here in Pennsylvania. So, uh, next question here: uh, Do you quarantine your coral for ick or velvet? It's getting dark. Sorry, I have a hard time seeing it. Uh, do you quarantine your coral for ick and velvet, or just pests? So, while I'm actually quarantining the uh, coral for pests primarily, and if you know ick and velvet were to come in on that coral, it would die out during that 60-day uh, quarantine period. Um, so I'm kind of getting two birds or three birds or whatever you want to count for that. So, but my primary goal for coral, because that is the pest, depending on what comes in, you know, agroporting flatworms, nudibranchs, um, uh, what else have we got there? We got flatworms, red bugs, all sorts of stuff, amptasia, um, bubble algae. It, I, it's, it's not living, well, it's kind of living, it's, it's algae, but I consider that a pest for sure. So, uh, vermintus snails, all sorts of stuff. Now, with, like I said, when I'm quarantining the coral for those main things and keep an eye on them, uh, yeah, so basically I'm gonna take care of ick and velvet at the same time. Now I do keep fish in my quarantine tanks and if I find that if I don't ever have an issue with those fish or they're not sick and I put in a whole batch of coral and they magically get ick uh, for some unknown reason, other than the fact that I just put those corals in there, then uh, yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna isolate those fish in a quarantine tank and treat them accordingly. I will dose nitrates, nitrates and phosphates to the coral quarantine tank to keep nutrients stable because really that's the primary uh, reason why I have fish in my coral quarantine tank is to not only you know maybe a ras to take care of some pests, but they're going to add some bio load and some nitrates and phosphates to keep the corals happy. That's really their main goal of being in there. But so I would isolate those fish, I would take care of them, and then I would just dose nitrates and phosphates to the coral quarantine tank and just continue that process for 60 days and then uh, you know make sure we're good to go pest-wise before putting them in the tank. Now moving on to the next question here, Tommy says, is the ugly phase brownish yellow algae coating on the rock? Question mark. I cured my rock for five months and the new tank has been up and running for a month and I am getting that brown algae. I gotta find another place to put this paper because it is dark and I can't read it. Can't read it as it is, but. All right, so is the brownish yellow algae coating the rock? So you are gonna get a little bit of algae and diatoms regardless of curing your rock. Now curing your rock definitely adds that biofilm that I've talked about a lot in, the, a lot in you know, several videos. But uh, what that does is that biofilm actually protects you from getting like 
green hair algae and that really hard, nasty um, bryopsis and stuff like that from sticking to the rock. It really does prevent that. And it also it just kind of, it's just a coating of the rock. It, it, over, it seals the rock. I don't mean it seals it completely, but it basically just protects the rock from uh, nuisance algae. Now, um, you are going to see diatoms regardless. Once you start adding light to any rock when it's been cured, you're going to get a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow, nothing crazy. But if you're not getting, so if you're not getting like green hair algae, and you're not getting, you know, just chunks of algae all over the place and just nastiness, you know the difference between diatoms and algae. So as long as you're not getting that, then your nutrients are fine and you don't really have much to worry about. But if you put it in the tank and you just took it out and it cured for five months and you're just getting a little bit of brownish and yellowish, I want to worry about that. Throw some snails in there, and then you know if you have tangs and stuff, they'll pick at it. You know it's not going to be too big of a deal. Um, so yes, I would consider that part of the ugly phase. Um, now, I guess people, it's up for debate here. People, what they consider to be the ugly phase, uh, diatoms and stuff like that, I don't consider that to be the ugly phase. It's just like okay, you got some light over the rock. It's just starting to show face. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's going to go away in a couple of weeks. I'm, when I say ugly, which I've done a video on this, there's no such thing as the ugly phase. There's the, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Now my tank looks like shit phase. That's, that's what that is called. That's, I didn't cure my rock. I didn't take the steps I needed to take. Now my tank looks like dog shit. That's what that phase is called. The ugly phase, no. Uh, it does look ugly though. So either way, um, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, which you said, you cured your rock for five months. You, you took the steps necessary to take care of it. You got a little bit of brownish yellowish on the rock, not a big deal, um, and I wouldn't worry about it. I just, un unless it starts turning into stalks of green hair algae, and that would indicate that you have another problem. If not the cure, maybe the rock was dirty ahead of time, maybe, you know, all the things we talk about when it comes to finding excess nutrients in the tank, one of those things might be the problem. So, I wouldn't worry about it, and uh, yeah, I wonder how many people I offended on that one. Last question here from Kevin. Does your chato come with complementary, complementary amplifiers? I'm sure it does. I see a bunch of that stuff in the refugium, and uh, it's it's probably out of stock anyway, so I'll check and see if I can uh, put it back in stock for the video. But uh, yeah, it has a bunch of pods and stuff in it, and uh, yeah, that's it's a random question, but it's answered. So anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. We've gone for 12 minutes. That's pretty good. Hopefully, the eight questions, there's technically seven with a plug at the end. What are you going to do? Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or you want to be part of this series, feel free to put it in the comment section. If you want to support the channel, head over to fishofhex.com. I am adding a bunch of new WYSIWYG to the website. I've cut a bunch of coral just waiting for the heel. And, uh, of course, there's always a bunch of 3D printing on there. So, with that said, guys, I will see you later with another video. Be safe. Peace.